welcome back we will now be looking at the last topic for the session which is basically the ability to do rfc lookups uh, from your pi message mappings what do we mean by lookup let's take an example right let's assume that in pi in, while the while the data says as first name your business tells you that the user id is going to be passed here and sorry i'm just going so this is our file to file scenario and your business comes into you and tells you that for the for the name field the first name is only going to contain your sap user id and once you have the sap user id you need to make a call to your sap backend make an rfc call to bappy user get detail get the first name and the last name out of that rfc call and then pass the concatenated uh, output of the first name and the last name to this particular field basically what what i mean by that is the first name is going to be user pi15 the last name is here in this case let's say admin and when and now instead of you passing the user id you need to make a call to sap and get the corresponding first name for that user uh, and the last name for that user using an rfc call so pi enables you to do an rfc lookup these these kind of message mapping where you're going to enhance the data by doing an additional lookup call is is going to is basically called an rfc lookup and to do do that let's go ahead again into the conversions tab and in the conversions you see there is something called jdbc lookup and something called rfc lookup so we are going to do an rfc lookup so i'm going to drag the rfc lookup here and now let's start looking at how do we use this rfc lookup right so when i double click on the rfc lookup it's asking me first thing no suitable parameter found define a new parameter of type channel first all right we will look at that and it, so let's cancel that and then go to the signature tab right and here i close this here we need to define a new parameter of type or rfc so i'll say rfc channel okay i'll call it as rfc channel type i'll say adapter and now once i say adapter i can use a selection help here and i can select rfc right so now i'm done with that i told that the parameter is called rfc so i go back to my definition all right and now again in my conversions i'm dragging my rfc lookup parameter perfect now i can go ahead and down here i can select the rfc so i need to define a parameter of type adapter and type rfc that's the first thing i need to do and once i do that in my rfc lookup i can select the type as communication channel and i can select my rfc channel parameter next i need to select an rfc module i use my selection help i see the bappy user get detail and bappy user existence check basically make sure that in your software component under imported object your bappies are imported in our case we had imported the bappy user get detail for our http to rfc scenario and hence i'm using the bappy user get detail out here and i'm saying apply okay i'm selecting the bappy user get detail saying apply and now it's going to ask you to add the input and the output field so let me drag this let me make this a little bigger yeah perfect okay i'm going to go in here select username and click on the plus sign so the username is added here okay and what do i need from the response i need from the response the first name i click on first name i need the last name i click on the last name all right perfect and then i click on okay so now what is the input to my rfc lookup it's going to be the first name field which is actually going to contain my user id i'm going passing that and my output contains my first name and my last name so that is going to be the output here i'm going to concatenate my first name and my last name all right i'm deleting it so my rfc lookup now becomes a function where it takes an input as username it gives me two outputs first name and last name and i'm concatenating those first name and out last name and putting them into the name field all right with that our change is done my rfc lookup mapping change is done similarly we need to go into the operation mapping and in the operation mapping as we did for the parameterized mapping i go into the parameter and i define a new parameter called rfc channel right it is of type adapter right 
and I select the adapter here of type RFC and I say apply and I click on save. Next again we need to do the binding. It's going to ask me what is the RFC channel and it's selecting my RFC channel and saying all right. I'm done with my operation mapping as well. Now let's go ahead and test them standalone. So when I go into my test tab, I go into my uh, parameters. I can now see the two new parameters here. But before that, all right, let's go into my parameters and just give the concat parameter. And for my RFC channel, it is now showing a selection help and it shows me all the RFC channels that I've defined in my integration directory. So Mark, what is this? This is the channel that we defined for our SOAP to RFC scenario. So I'm going to use this and say apply, right? Now I'm going to go in and say execute. Let, let's go into my document. I haven't changed my input data. So I'm now going to say username as user PI15 and this user ID as admin. Remember the input is first name field contains the SAP user ID. And when I give that, let's see what happens. Perfect. And you see somewhere the admin are now changed to Narasimha, a name called Narasimha because in ECC, if I go to my ECC system, okay, cancel. I go to SU01, I go to admin user and I say display. Still loading. Okay, this should not have taken so long. Something wrong with the SAP system. I think the session is logged off or something's gone wrong with my network. Well, that is loading. So what I wanted to show was, unfortunately, my SAP system is taking too long. Uh, what I wanted to show was that it is show it will bring in the last name. All right. So let's go ahead and activate our changes. And after I activate our change, my change is activated. And after I activate our change, I'm going to go into operation, my configuration. I'm going to go to my interface determination. Let's close. All right. Let's go into interface determination. Let me open my interface determination. It's under file to file, zero, zero. I'm opening my interface determination. And you see now the RFC channel is also being requested. So I'm now going to pass my RFC channel here. I'm going to select EH5CLNT SOAP to RFC RFC 00. That's the RFC channel that we created for my SOAP to RFC lookup. And now I'm going to activate my change. All right. Now let's go ahead and upload my file. Okay. Something's wrong with my SAP system. So I'm going to close my SAP system and log in and launch a new session. Okay. So let's launch a new session and I'm terminating that logon all right good okay now I'm going to CG 3z and uploading my file all right so I don't need this don't save I need my path and my CG 3z node is here all right I go here, copy this, put the CG3Z here, file to file XML. No, this is my target file. So I go here and I get my input file. No, but before I upload it, I need to make sure in my input file, my file contains my user IDs, right? So let's go here, file to file. I'll edit it with notepad. And here I'm going to change the John to user PI 15 and Jane to admin save after I save my file I'm going to upload my file and now that my file is uploaded I'm going to go into communication channel monitor and start and stop my channel the name of my channel is file to file sender 00 so I'm going into communication channel monitor and I'm going to stop, start and stop my channel. Okay, I'm into go. I'm stopping my channel. I'm starting my channel. And now my channel has started. So let's go into monitoring. I'm going into SXMB Moni. I'm going to go refresh. And 
hopefully things are working fine i go here and you see the admin has been changed with narsimha and the last user did not exist and that's why it has just a hash because it does not contain the user does not exist in sap all right perfect so this is what we did we did an rfc lookup now let's monitor the status of the rfc channel as well so what was the name of the rfc channel it is this guy right so i go here i go here and i say execute and you see here for for the same message id you have three messages this is the message id because there were three inputs there were three usernames and it made three rfc calls got the response and concatenated the last first name last name and gave it back as the output let's do the last thing we are now going to go into our message mapping and do it the same for the integrated configuration right so let's close this mapping let's go to our file to file ico i'm going to go into message mapping and i'm going to repeat what we did so i'm going to go into my enhanced mode pop out edit mode the first thing i've got to do is sorry this is the wrong mapping i've open my bad i'm going to go into file to file ico 00 i'm going into my message mapping okay this is the right mapping i'll go here into my edit mode so this is my file to file mapping i am in my edit mode i go to the signature and i am going to add a new thing call rfc i'll just call it rfc underscore mm okay it is of type adapter and i'm going to select that adapter type as rfc all right i've done that now i go into definition my message mapping's definition and here now i'm going to conversions okay i'm going to select rfc lookup and for my rfc lookup the first thing i'm going to select is rfc underscore mm i'm going to select the rfc module and what i'm going to do is instead of using dappy user get detail let's do a dappy user existence check here right so i'm saying dappy user existence check it's going to ask for a username as an input i'm going to yes say this is my mapping for the input all right and it's going to come back with an output that says is this the output of the mapping so let's select this message here and add that here and say okay right so i'm i'm going to pass my username as the input here and the output of the rfc lookup is going to get concatenated here so instead of using dappy user get details i've used dappy user existence check let's go ahead and test it and by for testing it i'm going to give a delimiter parameter as hash and i'm going to go in rfc mm i'm going to select my soap to rfc scenario communication channel in my and then i'm going to go into my document let's just give one username that exists i'm going to say the username as admin and execute right and let's look at the output user admin exists perfect let's let's go ahead now to our operation mapping make the same change to our operation mapping we are going to go into operation mapping define a parameter for our operation mapping i'm going to call it rfc underscore om and with that i'm going to type select the type as adapter and once i've done that i'm selecting is of type rfc and then saving it right i also have to do a band binding so the rfc mm has to be mapped to rfc om and that is done save go to your change list activate all your changes my message mapping and this is activated now once my activation is done i'm going into my configuration i'm going to my file to file ico i'm going to close everything else i'm going to my integrated configuration and within that in my receiver interfaces tab it's now going to ask me for what is my rfc channel and i'm going to select cc soap to rfc rfc receiver and i am going to apply and save now that i've done that i'm activating my integrated configuration and that is also done right now let's go ahead and upload my file it's going to be called but before that i need to just add a username that exists so i'm going to go, go into file to file ico uh, as my file to file ico here i'm going to edit i'm going to put the first name as say user pi 15 save and now that i've saved it i'm going to call file to file ico file to file 
ICO and upload my file. Right now that I've uploaded my file, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure start and stop my channel so that my file gets picked up uh, faster uh, so that we don't have to wait to see this execution. I go into file to file, I say execute, I say go and I stop my interface, I start my interface and then we go in and look for the final output in EL11. I refresh, my seventh file is available here and I get the message user PI exists. Let's see for the other users, it should say they do not exist. Uh, user Jane does not exist along with Do and so on. So with this, we come to the end of this session where we have done parameterized mappings. Uh, parameterized mapping here can be used in both message mapping, Java mapping and XSLT mapping. We saw an example of parameterized mapping where we used it in our message mapping. All right. And we also saw lookups where we did an RFC lookup. Similarly, there is a JDBC lookup that is also supported where you can make a lookup to a database table and pull the data back. All right. With this, we come to the end of this session and we shall see you again in the next session.